I will introduce you for two minutes. Then our vice chancellor will uh, speak briefly. Then uh, uh, you will be in the area. Uh, the last time speaker is also there, George Maurice uh, Camigo, um, the International Court of uh, Law, Law and Sea. He is also oh. there in the uh, uh, just uh, uh, the fifty second sofa oration was delivered by him. So mm -hmm. today he is also a, a listener. So good afternoon to all of you. Uh, today we have gathered here for the 53rd SOFA oration. Uh, respected Vice Chancellor of Sikha and Anusandhan University, Professor Pradipta Kumar Nanda, and today's speaker, Dr. Bho Joan Veen, and also the previous speaker, uh, Justice Maris K. Kamga, uh, George for the International Tribunal for the uh, law of the sea in Hamburg, Germany, and all and other distinguished audience, including our program officers, faculties, students, volunteers, 
and also outside uh, enthusiast from Sikhyan Anusandhan University. You will be happy to know that this is the third series of Sikhyan Anusandhan fortnightly academic lecture. And it started in 2021, February 20th. And we have already compiled 25 lectures of the first series into a book known as Sofal Mala. And the second book is uh, uh, under editing process and it will be compiled into the volume two. And this is the third series of Sofal Oration. For this, we have taken a very specific subject, Integrated Maritime Studies, so that this book will have a library value and reference for the research scholars. So the first lecture was delivered by Professor Vijay Sakuza, Director of National Maritime Foundation and also the Director of the Rashtriya Surakhya University in Gandhinagar. The second lecture was delivered by Justice Maurice K. Kamga, George, uh, Honorable George for the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea in Hamburg, Germany. And today, I have the privilege of introducing you to today's speaker, Dr. Bho Juan Vin, who is the Deputy Director General, Institute for Southeast Asian Studies, Vietnam Academy of Social Sciences, Hanoi. The Joint Institute for Southeast Asian Studies as a researcher since 2004. He successfully defensed his PhD thesis on ASEAN in India's Luke East policy in 2011. He has conducted various research on security, politics, and international relations in Southeast Asia, the South China Sea dispute, and India's Look East or Act East policy. Ho Juan Bin is the author of books, monographs, chapters, and research papers on issues of geopolitics, maritime security, politics, and international relations in Southeast Asia, the South China Sea dispute, and India's Look East or Act East policy. His latest English book, Pankaj K. Jha and Bho Juan Vin. Um, yes, Pankaj Jha, we had the privilege of having Pankaj Jha in the Dhara conference, which you organized from uh, November 8 to 10. So maybe we'll rope in Pankaj Kumar Jha for this uh, oration in the future also. So the book is India, Vietnam and the Indo-Pacific Expanding Horizons, which was published from London and New York, Rutledge. And uh, so we are really privileged, sir, to have you amongst us as a distinguished speaker of this uh, prestigious SOFAL series. Now, I will request our Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. P.K. Nanda, to kindly address the gathering briefly. Sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sarma. Uh, on behalf of the university, once again, welcome Dr. Booz Wan Vin to our uh, SOFAL lecture series. And uh, he's a very illustrious, he has a very illustrious career, and he'll be a distinguished speaker in this. I'm very happy to listen this. Our university actually uh, started in uh, 1996 as a college, became university in 2007, and uh, we have now 10 institutes and uh, 1,400 faculty members, 15,000 students, and our institute is uh, consistently ranked uh, within top 25 for last six years. Last year it was in 16. Also in QS and PHE, it has been uh, university category, it is 1000 uh, to 1200 bracket. And uh, as QS, SCI, it is 400 to 450 bracket. So, so I think university is progressing uh, from time to time. We have uh, 16 centers, 58 research labs. We have uh, more than 1000 research scholars carrying out different disciplines. So with this, I think, uh, I wish that the lecture will be successful. I'll not take much time. So I request uh, yeah, Dr. Ho as one win to start his lecture. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your kind address. So today's topic is India-Vietnam relations with special focus on C. Now the platform belongs to you, Dr. Ho. Please. Uh, thank you so much, um, Vice Chancellor, uh, uh, Professor P.K. Nanda. Uh, Professor uh, N.K. Sarma, thank you so much for inviting me to be a uh, lecturer uh, for the um, uh, uh, series. Uh, I think it is my uh, such a privilege to be a, a, a lecturer uh, of the university. Uh, I have uh, spent time on uh, conducting research on uh, India. 
so uh, that is, uh, I'm really happy uh, uh, to be here uh, again. And I'm, I'm trying to share my uh, presentation. I focus on the India, Viet uh, Vietnam in the relations, specifically on uh, maritime domain. Um, could you see the my slide? Yes, yes, it is visible. Mm. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. I have eighteen uh, slides. Um, you know that uh, uh, before going to the uh, co uh, Vietnam in the cooperation in the maritime domain, I think that we should have a look at the um, uh, the un uh, we should have an overview of uh, your relation between the two countries. Uh, you know that in uh, 1972, the uh, diplomatic relations between the two countries uh, was uh, established. And you know that in the Cold War, uh, India and um, Vietnam uh, supported each other very strongly, especially uh, in the support for Vietnam in the Cambodian issue. That, uh, you know that uh, the uh, Khmer Rouge uh, issues, uh, problem, as well as the, you know, China engagement in the, uh, uh, in the issue. Uh, so then, you know, that after the Cold War, the relation between the two countries uh, developed uh, very um, rapidly. And in 2007, the strategic partnership between the two countries was built. And in, uh, and you know that um, uh, with that, the strategic partnership established. So then in the, what's the second country after Russia, to uh, establish the strategic relations with Vietnam. And in uh, 2016, uh, the comprehensive strategic partnership between India and Vietnam was established. And uh, at that time, India was the uh, third country to establish a, a strategic, uh, a comprehensive strategic partnership after Russia and um, China. You know that so in the uh, Vietnam viewpoint or in Vietnam, you know, uh, foreign policy in the plays a very important role, you know. Now we have uh, around uh, 14 uh, strategic partnership and in the rank very high in that. And uh, now. Uh, we have seen uh, that it, uh, in uh, GD case, the Vietnam and Iran has uh, have uh, supported each other in uh, regional and international issue. You know that Vietnam has supported in the uh, uh, for the uh, in the uh, in the struggle for independence. Uh, Vietnam also supported India to engage in Asia Pacific, like uh, in in fora or. Uh, cooperation and mechanism such as um, ASEAN uh, for a uh, regional forum, ASEAN uh, plus one, uh, is Asia summit, ASEAN uh, defense ministers meeting uh, plus, uh, now uh, India has not joined the uh, regional co uh, comprehensive economic partnership, but you know that uh, in the process of the negotiation, uh, India was uh, partner and Vietnam uh, has a strong, a strongly supported India. And you know that uh, and again and again, Vietnam rise, uh, has the rise point uh, to uh, spot India to become a permanent member of the uh, United Nations Security Council once the uh, organization um, uh, reform. From its side, you know that India has also supported Vietnam, you know, uh, in the war against the US. And in the South China Sea issue, very you know that very uh, very strong uh, as well. And I will uh, talk about this later. And uh, you know that for the case in also uh, support Vietnam in terms of you know uh, uh, human development, uh, our relation um, based on the firm foundation with close links uh, in culture, history, civilization, uh, especially the merchant trusts between the two countries that, you know, that uh, in this uh, uh, the, the, the era of international relation that uh, if we have mutual trust, that I think is the most important. And in the, in Vietnam, we have that kind of thing. Now uh, we move to another field that is about the economic, especially the trade relation between Vietnam and India. Uh, you can see from the chart uh, that 
the trade between India and Vietnam, uh, you know, increased very uh, rapidly and strongly. And uh, you know that uh, in uh, fiscal year 2016-2017, uh, Vietnam became in the 19th uh, largest trading partner and it also decreased uh, uh, some due to the COVID-19 in the fiscal year 2021-2022. Uh, and a very important thing we can see here is that in the fiscal year 2016-2017, uh, Vietnam uh, surpassed uh, Thailand to become the India's fourth largest, uh, trading, largest trading partner in Asia. On the way, we are the fifth of the sixth uh, largest economy in Asia. But now we became India's fourth largest trading partner in Asia. And uh, in uh, 2000. 2021-2022, it became the eighth uh, largest trading partner of Vietnam, uh, with the eighth uh, largest exporter to Vietnam and the tenth largest import, importers from Vietnam. Uh, that is very important, you see. Uh, so uh, with the that uh, uh, that 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 figure, uh, we also uh, from political we have mutual trust, and now in trade we also. Uh, are the important uh, partner. And uh, in, in, in terms of uh, investment, although in the, you know that in Vietnam uh, have not been uh, the uh, uh, significant uh, investors in terms of volume, but you know that in the investment in the South China Sea has the uh, uh, very uh, significantly uh, important, uh, um, you know, that factor. Uh, in uh, component in Vietnam in the relation, and then I will talk about this later. And uh, now I think we should go to the uh, cooperation between Vietnam and India in maritime domain. Uh, the first is about the, uh, how important that Vietnam and India have in the South China Sea. In the map, you can see that uh, now uh, we have, you know, uh, overlapping uh, uh, claims in the South China Sea. Uh, we face, Vietnam faces with a lot of challenges, especially the uh, nine dots line, like uh, as uh, the uh, China's claim in the South China Sea, you can see that the uh, nine dots line with the red uh, point in the map, you can see that. So uh, you know that uh, in look at the map of Vietnam. So you can see that the uh, sea domains play a critical um, role in the Vietnam's uh, uh, developed and uh, uh, existing. So then uh, with the nine dash line, so it is really a big challenge. I I I mean I think that it is you. Know, the most critical challenge to Vietnam in, in terms of maritime domain. And from Indian side, you know that um, nearly 50% of Indian trade was, uh, is uh, um, uh, coast bound. And you know that it, uh, it, it transits through the Strait of Malacca, through the South China Sea. So South China Sea also, you know that it is a secondary uh, um, concern of India in terms of you know maritime uh, strategy, but very important because you have fifty percent of its trade go through the uh, uh, Malacca Strait to the South China Sea, you know, and you know that uh, the importance of the South China Sea also you know uh, affirmed by the uh, in uh, former uh, Admiral uh, George uh, Navy Chief Admiral uh, Joshi, he uh, said that. Uh, in the wood, send the force to uh, protect its interests in the South China Sea. In you know, in 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 a uh, press release in uh, 2012. So I think that I should just uh, give some points that reflect the importance of the South China Sea uh, to Vietnam and India. Now, uh, here your direction of uh, bilateral maritime cooperation, that the uh, maritime cooperation uh, is also an important component of India and Vietnam, uh, at least reflected in the joint declaration. Uh, the first declaration I, I want to point out here is the declaration uh, in 2007 when Vietnam and India uh, established a strategic 
relation in the uh, in the uh, declaration uh, they uh, two countries have great uh, maritime interests the two sides agree to work closely to strengthen cooperation in capacity building a technical assistance and information sharing between relevant agency of the two countries in ensuring maritime security, including uh, anti-piracy, uh, pollution prevention, and search and rescue. And very recently, in the visit of the um, uh, President Ram Nath Kovin to Vietnam in November 2018, the, uh, the two sides also agreed to on the necessity of strengthening maritime cooperation, including the, uh, combating piracy. Uh, ensuring the uh, security of sea lanes and exchanging non-military maritime information. That is, you know, that is just direction. Uh, but in 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 uh, reality, it I think it's much more than that, and I will tell you later. And here now we come with some frameworks that it um, publicly announced, with uh, like some other MOU, some other in agreement that we uh, has not, we have not. Uh, release uh, publicly, so I think it's much more important. But in here, I think that it's quite uh, small, so it is difficult for someone to read. But we can see uh, uh, that from very quite early uh, start with the uh, agreement between the Viet Petro Vietnam and ONGC of India in the South China Sea, and then after that, um, again and again, the uh, Petro Vietnam and uh, ONGC, we you know again and again sign agreements on the. Uh, oil and gas exploration in the South China Sea and from the government of Vietnam and government of India, we also signed uh, some other agreement, uh, maybe uh, on the white shipping, maybe on, you know, that the maritime ecology and and other. Uh, and uh, you know that uh, later I will tell you about the uh, framework for the, you know, that uh, uh, in enhancing the uh, sea enforcement uh, of Vietnam that's supported by India and some other, you can see from the slides. And now we go uh, directly to the fields of cooperation, uh, maritime cooperation between Vietnam and India. And from my personal viewpoint, I uh, share the uh, this uh, field of cooperation into five fields. Uh, the first is about the oil and gas exploration. Uh, the second is about the our shared viewpoint on the South China Sea or the shared viewpoint on the South China Sea between India and Vietnam. The third one is about the uh, India's naval ship visit and using port facility in the South China Sea. Uh, the third is about the uh, India support Vietnam in terms of enhancing, enhancing Vietnam maritime um, <coughs> enforcement, sorry. And uh, the last but not least, that's about the joint naval exercise between Vietnam and India in the South China Sea. Now uh, we move to the first one that is about the oil and gas exploration. Oil and gas exploration between the two countries, you know, started in 1988. India was the first country, not with Russia, but with India, is the first country in 1988. <coughs> sorry, to become an uh, a partner of Vietnam in uh, joint exploration in the South China Sea and recently. Uh, although in the low number, it's not uh, in the few number. Uh, now, um, as I learned that India now has only one uh, block uh, uh, with the uh, OVL, uh, but I think it's really important for Vietnam. Uh, why important? You know that again and again in the right for it to oppose on even if you know uh, it won uh, the uh, project jointly project of Vietnam and India uh, when we you know that have uh, <coughs> sorry have implemented our project in the South China Sea we you know rece receive the rejection from uh, objection from in the, in, even the warning from uh, sorry from China. But you know that we firmly stay there. And I think that it's most important. And uh, recently in the uh, Indian uh, President Ram Nath Kovin uh, to Vietnam in November uh, 2018, you know that in the joint declaration, we again and again affirm that the Petro Vietnam and ONGC of India continuities of you know, uh, of, uh, their joint uh, exploration and production of oil and gas in the South China Sea and even in that 
declaration, uh, they mention of the invite the third party to help join a uh, project in the South China Sea. I think that is really important. Uh, before, we, you know, we, we, we um, I think that we, we, we didn't mention that kind of thing, but recently we mentioned about the third party uh, joining the uh, Vietnam and joint, uh, joint exploration of going to, uh, oil and gas in the South China Sea. That is important. That's the first point on the joint and gas exploration. Now we move to the East uh, Sea or uh, South China Sea East Sea or in Vietnam, it's we, 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 we call it East Sea. And very happily that in 2013, um, you know that in the um, in his speech at the banquet hosted the uh, uh, Vietnam uh, Vietnamese General uh, Secretary, Secretary, Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam, Nguyen Phu Trang. So uh, former uh, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, he leaves it easy to refer to South China Sea. That is the, the first ever uh, uh, an, uh, in the leader or maybe the, the first ever in the world a leader that used the term easy to refer to the South China Sea, uh, you know, in in in, in a, uh, maybe in a banquet or in a meeting or in a media med, uh, media or press release or something else. I, I I don't know, but I think from my personal viewpoint and from what I have learned that this is the first time a leader of a country used the easy to uh, describe to name the South China Sea, that is very important for us. The second is that in 2016, uh, and, and uh, after the PCA ruling on the South China Sea uh, case between the Philippines and China, and in our declare, joint declaration, we also mentioned about the, uh, the, the wording of the uh, APC ruling, uh, of the uh, um, uh, APC, uh, PCA, sorry, PCA. That is very important that uh, because uh, very few people, they really dare to, to, to mention about the uh, PCA ruling. But in, in, the, in Vietnam, we also say that we also mention about the uh, implementation of the uh, declaration of parties on the South China Sea or DOC or the Code of Conduct in the South China Sea or COC. You know that uh, in that we uh, always Stretch the respect for the United Nations uh, on the uh, Convention on the Law of the Sea. That's very important. And in 2016, also again in the visit of the Indian uh, President Ram Nath Kovin to Vietnam in November 2018, in that the two country in the joint declaration, two countries stretch the necessity of the full and effective implementation of the uh, declaration on uh, the of the party on the um, on, on, on the South China Sea uh, or we call that the uh, DOC as well as the early conclusion uh, um, substantive effective and a binding code of conduct in the South China Sea at this point I want to uh, to, 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 to have some more to talk about it why uh, I think that some years ago uh, when I um, Assess the website of the uh, uh, Ministry of External Affairs of India, and I see that in, in, in the declaration, still using the binding code of conduct in the South China Sea. But recently, when I uh, access to download again, so I don't see the binding, the word binding in, in the joint declaration, and I don't understand. But from Vietnamese side, we still keep that word in in the uh, our joint declaration. Uh, that is very important that in the South China Sea, uh, I want to say here is that that India uh, has been firmly supported Vietnam in the South China Sea uh, from the using the term, uh, the word is sea on the end about the mentioning about the PCA ruling and as well as soothing um, the word like binding code of conduct in the South China Sea that is very important for Vietnam and also reflect the, um, I think that the, 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 the viewpoint of India in the South China Sea, we share very uh, 
uh, a lot of you know uh, common views on the South China Sea. That is about the South China Sea. That's the second, and now the third. Uh, we go to the Indian snapper ships, and it's using the port facility in the South China Sea. You know that every year since two thousand Indian snapper ship have paid with it to make the port of Vietnam, and uh, and that very important, important port like in Ding Vu, in the northern province of Haiphong, uh, in near Hanoi or also near China, in Tien Sa, in the Chanta province of Da Nang, and then Da Nang, I think, is now very popular in, 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 in India, in Ho Chi Minh City or in Nha Trang, Nha Trang uh, in Khánh Hòa, uh, we also have uh, a very important port there. And uh, uh, Professor Baladas Koshan also uh, mentioned that the Indian Navy was even reported to have been, uh, you know, the only foreign Navy in the same time to have given the privilege uh, at the port other than Halong Bay near Hanoi. You know, that, uh, that also his mentioned. And uh, you know that. Uh, uh, there are also uh, views that the uh, frequent uh, friendship with us to, India by, to Vietnam by in the naval ship in Haiphong province that near both Hanoi and Vietnam uh, led to building the confidence and an Indian government sort, uh, noted that it, the move will give India the key to uh, sustainable uh, presence in the South China Sea. That is very important. And uh, you know that in recently, uh, we also heard about a research uh, released by uh, ORF of India that Vietnam had granted an uh, exclusive access to Indian naval ship to the Nha Trang port, very near uh, the Cam Ranh uh, Bay port, a very um, a strategic port there in, in the uh, South China Sea, in the southern uh, part of Vietnam. And that is the third uh, field. The fifth field uh, is about the maritime exercise. Uh, this is also important. That uh, as uh, far as I know, that uh, in 2013, India started the training. Uh, uh, sorry, here is about the um, uh, uh, India support uh, in enhancing Vietnam uh, maritime enforcement. That, uh, uh, you know, that. Uh, Mm, in, two, uh, in 2000, the Indian uh, Defense Minister George Fernandez, he uh, came to Vietnam and we signed an MOU in that uh, one agreement that uh, India support Vietnam in, in terms of you know, joint uh, naval uh, training. And 2013 was the first training. Uh, in a started training for the Vietnamese officers and sailors in uh, submarine operation. And uh, uh, after that, there will be, you know, that uh, in the, you know, um, support Vietnam in terms of the transferring the item for the uh, ship. Uh, also, uh, you know, that uh, in also, you know, um, uh, offer a credit line for, uh, you know, uh, building uh, manufacturing the patrol uh, boat for Vietnam, you know, the patrol in the South China Sea, very strategic uh, uh, location. And uh, uh, recently, uh, we also talking about the India uh, and Vietnam negotiation for, you know, uh, uh, for that Vietnam buy the uh, uh, super a sonic uh, cru uh, cruise missile that promote. That also very important for Vietnam and also, you know, mark a very important, important point in uh, Vietnam in a relation. Now we move to the last but not least, the uh, last um, film of the maritime cooperation between in the Viet and Vietnam that about the Navan exercises. Uh, you know that uh, in 2013, the first joint naval exercise between Vietnam and India took place in the South China Sea. And after that, about the 1915 and recently 19, uh, 2020, 2021, India and Vietnam also uh, conducted joint uh, naval exercise. You know that uh, as, as far as I learned, India was the first country uh, to conduct joint naval exercise with Vietnam. You know, after uh, with uh, the joint naval exercise with 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 uh, uh, 
uh, in the Indian Yin joint effort exercise between Vietnam and Japan was organized. And recently, we see more and more joint effort exercise between uh, India and Vietnam. And I think that is really important, not only for Vietnam, for, uh, for its uh, maintaining the uh, or increasing its strength, but also the increase the uh, inter inter's presence in the South China Sea, a very uh, strategic point, especially in the uh, context of the, the Quad with the uh, inter's uh, the outlook on the uh, Indo-Pacific. It is also important because you know that India has a very long time of engaging in the South China Sea, especially uh, with I think that we just support from Vietnam and you have that, of course, in the support of Vietnam in terms of, you know, that job presence in the South China Sea, among other partner. So then we have, you know, uh, diversifying uh, the presence of other countries in the South China Sea. I think with that kind of thing, so um, a counterbalance to China has been established there with the president of the United States of America, with Japan, Australia, India. Uh, recently, we have seen the uh, patron by the worship of Canada uh, about the uh, France and Germany. So then with that kind of thing, I think that is really important for Vietnam in terms of, you know, that uh, at least the maintaining international uh, sea order in the South China Sea, that is very important. And now I come to uh, uh, to uh, conclusion with all these two points. The first is that Vietnam and India relations are now a comprehensive strategic partnership with traditional and strong political trust and increasing economic importance. That is the first, first point. And the second point in terms of the maritime domain is that India is the most comprehensive strategy partner that Vietnam has in the maritime domain. No one in the world that Vietnam has comprehensive joint activity that could have in terms of expressing our view on the South China Sea with the, with the, uh, with the consistent viewpoint. On the South China Sea, that we always raise the unclosed 1982 unclosed. We mentioned about international law. We mentioned about the implementing the DOC and the early conclusion of the COC or even the binding uh, COC in the South China Sea. Uh, you know, we have in the it may be the first one in the world have you know that very long history of the naval visit to Vietnam to parts of Vietnam from the north to the center to the south. And also, you know, have, you know, that uh, other support for Vietnam in terms of enhancing Vietnam capability of the enforcement, of sea enforcement. And we also have joint naval exercise. That may be uh, the most number belong to Indo naval that Vietnam have joined. Uh, never exercise with. So that the, that the, the reason I emphasize that India is the most comprehensive strategic partner that Vietnam has the maritime, in the in the maritime domain. And that is all I have here, some references that uh, I use for my presentation. And thank you so much for your kind attention. Again, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bo, for very enlightening uh, talk between the India-Vietnam relations with special emphasis on the maritime domain. Uh, now the question and answer session begins. And uh, just to initiate the questions, uh, I will just uh, uh, need your comments actually. Uh, as you have very rightly mentioned that uh, India is the, probably the third uh, comprehensive strategic partner after Russia and uh, PRC. Uh, I also find out that there is a natural, uh, not only the historical and cultural connections between India and Vietnam, even uh, geographically also 
Vietnam has a very long coastline of 3,260 kilometers. India has a coastline of 7,500, uh, close to 7,500 kilometers. And our state, Odisha, has also a coastline of 450 kilometers. So we are also uh, the very objective of starting this lecture series on integrated maritime studies and roping in people like uh, Professor Vijay Sakuza, you and uh, Professor Maurice Kamga, and uh, the next lecture will be delivered, delivered by uh, Dr. Sikant Kesnur, the retired commodore of Indian Navy, uh, is to have a center of excellence on maritime studies in our university in the near future. And with that in objective, uh, that in mind, we have also uh, conducted a Ministry of Culture funded Dhara conference here in our university from November 8th to November 10th. So we'll be definitely very happy to host you uh, in our university whenever you will find in coming down to India. So now my point is that Vietnam has probably the fourth largest diaspora in the United States of America. What I know that after China, India, like that many Vietnamese students are going to uh, USA for their higher studies. How do you foresee uh, the Vietnamese students coming to India? Because uh, our consul general in Ho Chi Minh City is trying hard to have uh, Vietnamese stu students in our university. Especially you see our university has a, uh, the USP uh, of our university is health sciences. We have got a very good uh, teaching medical uh, college along with a hospital and a corporate hospital. And we are coming out uh, with a uh, very sophisticated paramedic uh, courses, uh, like uh, uh, radiotherapy, uh, then uh, cardiovascular technology, anesthesia, uh, physiotherapy, in this kind of things where the African, a uh, lot of African students are coming to this university to read in this course. So my point is that, um, uh, in what uh, areas do you think that there is a possibility or feasibility of Vietnamese students coming to read in India, especially in Odisha, uh, like that? Please uh, enlighten us on this point. Oh, um, may I uh, share my view right now? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for <coughs> informing about uh, an uh, upcoming conference in November. Thank you so much for that. <coughs> Sorry uh, about the uh, about the Vietnamese student uh, learning abroad. Uh, that you know that um, India, you know, has long time uh, offer the scholarship for Vietnamese student to go to learn India. You know that now uh, Vietnamese students uh, are now uh, in a high number in the United States of America, in Japan, in Australia, and yet even in UK or some country in the um, uh, Eastern uh, Europe. Um, I, uh, but in India, you know that we, a lot of students, uh, I know, I'm sorry, that not a lot of, but uh, students also come, come to study in New Delhi and in Mumbai. I think uh, also some, and uh, with a short cut or the long, or the um, uh, full-time course in India, but mostly in New Delhi and in Mumbai, I, I think so. And I think that uh, uh, maybe in the uh, future, if if there are more and more uh, scholarship of Indian government for Vietnamese students, and even you know the ITEC or ICGR scholarship, so we uh, there will be more students to go to India, maybe in Odisha in the university. And but one thing that it is a reality uh, that uh, I think that I I I, I that is. This is my uh, viewpoint, personal viewpoint only. That is about the before uh, student really they didn't want to learn in the too much because of what? Because of the uh, climate. 
uh, that is, uh, I think, a difficult climate for them. Uh, the second thing is about the food. It's very uh, difficult between India and Vietnam. India can come and eat very easily in Vietnam, but Vietnamese uh, feel very difficult to eat food in India. Um, the, the third reason is about the the fact that um, if they uh, someone can learn English well, I think that excellent student, they usually choose the United States of America, the UK, uh, Japan, or Australia, or Canada, or some other country in Europe to study, because uh, they know little about the education in India. If um, you one who really want to enjoy counter thing, counter thing like India, which is the, the richest of the country, they will come to India. But I think that it's very quite few. One reason is about the kind of climate. The second about the food, and the third is about the number, uh, uh, the scale of the scholarship. If they get scholarship, government scholarship in Japan or in US or in UK in Canada or somewhere else, the scholarship is really high. But with the scholarship in India, I think it's um, still not high. So, so I think that um, many of them really don't want to go to India. But with someone who really enjoy cultural thing, they really want to enjoy different thing. Like me, that I really want to to, to enjoy uh, or explore the Indian culture. So I went to India to learn Hindi in Accra and come back to serve my country in terms of, you know, to be a lecturer, to be a researcher. So I really enjoy India. So I, I decided to go to India to learn. That is from my personal viewpoint. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bo. Now, I, uh, anybody, Vice Chancellor, sir, if you have got any question, but sir no uh, no uh, dr uh, who actually uh, just a minor clarification uh, what is the percentage of the trade i think we are having the very time uh, what is the percentage uh, in terms of vietnamese in terms of indians like uh, so as you told that you have a lot many sales uh, i think uh, i think uh, through the trade is there so what could be the percentage? Is five percent, ten percent? What is that in terms of? Okay, let me see. Sorry, sorry, I'm coming up. Mm -hmm. Because you have a lot of, uh, I think, uh, relationship in that. Um, sorry, here uh, give us some, 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 some uh, uh, figure I yeah. uh, put in here, but uh, you know that. Uh, Although India is the largest trading partner of Vietnam, but now uh, with Vietnam is now with 23rd. And uh, when I counted the figure that uh, the trade that Vietnam contributes to India total trade is not, um, it's just more than 1% only. Okay. Okay. Yes, very small. Although yeah. India is very important trading partner of Vietnam, okay. but uh, in 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 uh, Vietnam now still it is very low rank in terms of the trading partner of India. As I count, I think two days ago when I uh, counted the number and I found out that about one point twenty seven percent of India total trade that Vietnam contributed to. Uh, do you feel that the education system in India and the Vietnamese, whatever you are doing, like apart from the points you raised, that uh, that's a motivating factor to definitely go to West and other places. Uh, do you think the education system in India and Vietnamese, do they have some kind of uh, similarity or kind of uh, what kind of uh, relation we can think of between education system of India and Vietnam? Oh, uh, thank you so much for the question about the uh, education uh, uh, system. Uh, that, you know, uh, 
of course, each country has uh, its own uh, education system, but with uh, globalization, so then uh, that um, in the in Vietnam, I think I think we are uh, trying to upgrade our uh, education system in terms of uh, internationalized our um, education system. I think so, and a lot of you know um, university in Vietnam yet trying to upgrade to 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 be recognized in the uh, uh, international education system like uh, with ranking like uh, QS or some others yeah, yeah. and many of them now or uh, you know that was in the list of the maybe hundred in Asia or maybe some uh, faculty they now rank in the hundreds uh, rank of the international. So we move to that kind of thing. And I, I, I'm i sorry that I really don't learn much about India, Indian um, education system. Uh, and I don't know much about that. But uh, you know that uh, a lot of university uh, in India, like uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi University, that also, that also famous and well known in Vietnam. Yeah, I think really we are, in India, we are NEP 2020 also it has rolled out. And yes. uh, that's also in uh, kind of the sync with the international education system and all. Yeah. OK, OK. So thank you. I think. Thank you. thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wu. Uh, another question, actually, as I have mentioned you earlier, uh, we have a uh, MOU with uh, Natrang University. Uh, just recently, I had been to uh, Natrang and uh, we have signed a MOU with uh, Natrang University. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, how to make this uh, MOU functional? That is a very important question oh. because signing a MOU is not a very difficult thing. And uh, another thing I find uh, lacking in uh, Vietnam, maybe uh, they, they don't uh, know English. Uh, even oh. many oh. university professors also, uh, they don't know English. So there is a lot of uh, scope for uh, uh, English teachers, uh, maybe in Vietnam. So my point is that uh, how to make uh, this, uh, especially from a perspective of a Vietnamese university, how to make it functional so that the students can go from this university to the Vietnamese university, Vietnamese university can come to this university. So this kind of exchanges will go on and the MOU will be really meaningful. So please highlight on this. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And um, to be honest that uh, now the, um, the, the, the university system in Vietnam, you know, the, a lot of universities they try to sign MOU with uh, university abroad. So then uh, I think the, 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 the first objective is that now you have to join with your ranking, one ranking. So one of the criteria is signing MOU with uh, university outside their country. I think that that's the first one. Um, but after signing, so how do you know that uh, uh, to, to, to bring them in reality, in, in a practical, I think it's quite difficult. You think, as you mentioned, that your lecturer, your teacher, and even uh, a lot of students, they cannot speak English. So then it is really difficult for them to go uh, to India. And the second thing is that, you know, in some university in Vietnam, they still believe that until they sign MOU with you, but they still believe that they will receive with you um, the, the support from the university, like uh, uh, give them scholarship to go to learn in India, or short cut in India, or even get to organize joint uh, uh, conference workshops with uh, the university. So I think that uh, with um, a small, I, I, I think that it's not small, but uh, uh, university in a, a, a location, I think not, it's not in a big city like Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh or Da Nang. So I think that if you want to uh, 
um, bring the MOU in uh, reality. So I think that from that side, you should support more and more for them like, uh, uh, like um, uh, tell them that uh, organize the uh, joint uh, conference in Nha Trang. But I think that the budget should be from your side. Or at least they just give you the, the, the hotel or the, uh, uh, the venue to organize only. But one thing, one thing I, I think that you, you, you should think about is that uh, one point that uh, a lot of university in Vietnam they want to do is that organize a conference and present paper and publish paper and publish in your university. If they have paper to publish in your university by proceeding, so then they have you know, more point to count it. So then that is the thing you should do. I think you support them with that. I think with the low budget it is okay. And with the publication you have between your university and this university, so then uh, they will have more marks, more points to upgrade their level. And I think from your side, you upgrade your level or not, but at yeah. least from Nyatran, and they, they will have that. So we can support uh, step by step. I think so. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wu. Is there any questions from audience? Um, anybody who can ask a question? I think someone uh, raised their, their hand. Uh, uh, anybody? Yes, please. Those who have raised your hand, please, can you ask your questions? You can unmute yourself and ask the question. Uh, or the organizer, if you are finding a hand to be raised, let me check the chat box. Is there anything? Anyone? Anyone from? No chat. I'm not finding any chat. Um, uh, yes, uh, so if there is no questions, uh, then there will be last questions to the speaker. Uh, how do you see the uh, Vietnam buying the supersonic cruise missiles BrahMos from India in any foreseeable future? Oh. Thank you. Uh, after uh, your question, I think the judge, uh, other one, uh, raised their hand. Okay, I will uh, uh, answer the question that um, in 2011, Vietnam and India started uh, to negotiate the uh, Brahmos missile. And you know that in 2007, by some reason, I, I don't understand why that uh, we delay that kind of thing. And recently, we again uh, negotiate for the, um, uh, for, for, for the uh, uh, inner sales Brahmos missile to Vietnam. And I think maybe in the future, because uh, recently in the, you know, uh, Philippines got the Brahmos missile from India. And now with Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam, we also negotiate with in the form Brahmos missile. So then with a lot of uh, uh, country in the region, so I think that it's in, maybe in the new future, we can conclude that negotiation. Because now recently, like uh, mm -mm, Philippines also allied of US, Thailand is also an allied of US. They also, but they try to uh, diversify the source of the uh, weapon of importing the uh, weapon. So then I think that in the future, uh, the, uh, the deal between the India and Vietnam in terms of the Brahmos missile uh, will be, uh, no, will come true. That's from my viewpoint. Thank uh, you. Thank you. There is a question from Judge uh, Mariske Kamga. Um, he has raised his hand. Please, uh, you have been unmuted and uh, uh, so please ask your question, Professor. Uh, Professor Kamga, you can ask your question, please. Professor Kamga.
uh, probably there is some connectivity problem. He has written, I am trying to raise my hand and to intervene, but it seems difficult. Uh, I think he's unmute. Uh, is he mute? No, 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 he is mute. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, please unmute yourself, just, uh, uh, because from our side, we have able to make you able, please. Or, or maybe from the uh, technical thing that uh, you should allow someone to, 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 to mute because if the system is unmute for all, so then it's difficult for them to, 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 to unmute. Uh, here, I think there's some question in the chat box. Professor Sama, I think you are mute now. Uh, yes, there is a question from a Kenyan student. What opportunities are there for students in maritime studies, like internships, career advancement, or research options? Okay. Um, thank, thank you so much for the question uh, from... Uh, uh, okay. Kinutia, Kinutia. Kinutia from uh, Kinutia. Uh, there is an open opportunity for students every time study. Uh, the thing is that students now belong to specific university. So if you, uh, because India and Vietnam, especially Vietnam, so Vietnam now, uh, which in a uh, low budget of the university, but so we, I think that we don't have anything like scholarship for students from India to, 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 to do their internship in, in our country. Uh, but I think with the MOU sign, MOU sign between Inner uh, University and Vietnam University. So uh, I think you will have scholarship for that. And if you want to join an internship in Vietnam, so I think MOU should be, should have. But second thing is that the budget should come in from your university. Uh, that is second. And the third is that uh, about the career advancement, I, I, I'm mentioning about uh, in Vietnam. So uh, in Vietnam, we have, you know, that university, they invite the scholar, um, maybe some sometime come to teach, to give lecture in yes university. But I'm not sure that uh, I know some, but, but I'm not sure now. But I think that you should find some. And I think that career for the scholar in terms of the maritime study, I think it's also available. Uh, and you can do that with uh, do Vietnam research, not only in Vietnam, or maybe you can find some in Singapore or some other countries surrounding the South China Sea, and you, you can find that. Also, you conduct research on Vietnam in India, and they can provide you, I think so. And just uh, Boris Kamga, he said, he or she uh, said that could not uh, unmute. Uh, uh, from this side, we have unmuted him. I was trying to say that we should try to establish. Uh, he has his question. Oh. I was trying to say that we should try to establish South-South cooperation between our universities. Hita Sindola Cameroon will be pleased to host some students who will like to learn English in an intensive program of six months. Cameroon is a bilingual country of English and French. Oh. Uh, your comments, please, sir. Oh, it is. It, I think very good news. And from Indian side, I, I really don't want to have any comment, but uh, from Vietnamese side, you know that um, now uh, there are also some other country to provide the uh, English coach for students, and even India. A lot of Vietnamese students, they come to learn in India with a shortcut, in, including English coach. Uh, and I think that uh, 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 San Maji, I think that uh, your university should join the uh, education system of government of India 
and to receive the Vietnamese student in the ITEC program, in the ICCR program, that can receive Vietnamese student come to the to your country, in yes. your country. And from the Cameroon, I think that uh, your, you know, uh, your embassy in Vietnam, you know, should connect with the Ministry of Education in Vietnam and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Vietnam, and they will have, you know, announcement to the uh, all university in the country and uh, insti uh, academic institution in the country, and we can access that kind of uh, the, the, um, information. And I think that there will be some people apply with the uh, English course. I think that Cameroon is, uh, I think that some people in Vietnam, they want to explore your country. So I think that a lot of, not a lot of, but some of them will, you know, apply for that. Thank you so much for, 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 for the idea, uh, the judge. Yes, I think uh, if there are no questions, uh, I think now is the, now this is time. Uh, so it is the time to accord a vote of thanks officially to the speaker. So on behalf of the university outreach cell and the university, uh, we are deeply privileged and grateful to today's speaker, uh, Dr. Ho Juan Fin. And uh, we are very happy to host you, sir. And in near future, we'll be definitely looking forward to your physical participation um, uh, as we are con contemplating upon opening a center of excellence for merit integrated maritime studies. And uh, uh, this year, there will be 25 online lectures on specific topics by experts. And this is the third lecture. And the fourth lecture, as I have mentioned earlier, will be given by a retired Commodore of Indian Navy, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Srikant Kesnur. So I will also send you the link. If you can find time, you can join the lecture. So on behalf of the university, I am again very, very thankful to you. And uh, so please accept our respects. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank you very thank much, you so much. Uh, Professor thank Sarma. You. Thank you all for uh, your uh, attention. And uh, please send me the link. And uh, I'm trying to find opportunity to, to join uh, the event. Uh, thank you uh, so much, uh, the Vice uh, Excellency, uh, Professor uh, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Dr. Ho. Thank, thank you, Dr. Ho. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So my, much. my thanks are also due to our Vice Chancellor. Thank you, everybody. I am extremely thankful to all of you for your uh, time and for your participation in this beautiful oration by Dr. Bo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. Thank thank you. you. I hope to see you very soon. Okay. Very soon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.